Hey guys, I am Big and Scary. I'm bringing you another StarCraft II replay. This time featuring in our top left corner, Violent Birds, our Red Zerg. You can do it. Move him. Yes, Red Zerg. He is in Masters, and Mubius, our Blue Protoss, is in Very High Diamond. We are on Ohana. This is a Zerg versus Protoss, and we're going to have a fun time. Masters level play. It's uh, It's always entertaining to watch that level of play, especially whenever there's some innovation uh, involved. In fact, there's not going to be a lot of innovation in the opening moments of the game because we're going to see a Forge Fast Expand coming out of Mevius on the low ground and then probably a 15 pool, 15 hatch from Violent Birds. Maybe if we're crazy we'll see a hatch first, but only if we're like off the riddle and crazy. Uh, it never happens. Never. Uh, so I don't have a lot to talk about for the next minute. I'm not gonna lie. We could talk about the map. Do you guys know about Ohana? You should because it's fantastic. It's beautiful, and it's also really, really long. The rush distance covers a ridiculous amount of space. I mean, look how long it took for that probe from Mevius actually to make its way to Violence Main Base. Is is forever, absolutely forever, and that can play a lot into these kind of macro mind games. The probe has just now arrived. Sees that. You know, the pool's not even up. We're almost at that 15 supply mark. It's going to get pushed back just a little bit by those drones, but uh, it's not going to succeed in taking any hull damage. And he's also going to scout that there's no gas down just yet. It's not going to be a hatch first build. Indeed, there goes that spawning pool. And I believe it was, it was, yeah, it was scouted by Mevius's pro. So that's a good pickup right there. No, you know, seeing that that pool is up, he's going to know that the hatchery is going to be in route in relatively short order uh, and also it's important for him to keep that probe alive for as long as possible it's usual you know usually you see the probe follow the drone down try to get a block off but i don't think mevius is trying to do that just yet uh, it's kind of a waste of micro really yeah you can ex succeed in, in denying the hatchery just for a couple of seconds uh, however what are, what are you really gaining at the cost of your apm and at the master's level it's more important that you get your timings right back at home uh, get that forge up, make sure you get your gas, make sure you get your gateway position correctly, rather than trying to do something fancy like deny a hatchery for tw 12 seconds. Uh, what are you trying to gain there? It will make you a better play in the long run, but uh, in the short run, it'll make you lose games. Focus on the basics. Uh, speaking of basics, there goes the extractor. It's going to be getting some gas so we can get that basic tech up. The uh, 100 gas for the metabolic boost, 100 gas for the layer tech. Very important there, and also very important that Mevius' probe is still alive in the main base. All he needs to do is move north to check out that extractor. However, the queen will be out in just a couple of seconds. There goes the extractor finished. The probe's still just barely out of range. He's just got to move north just to scout that gas. You can expect reasonably for that gas to be out. Like I said, it's totally standard. Like, it would be out of the ordinary for the gas not to be there. But sometimes if you push north and you see that there's no gas, you can feel far more comfortable in the fact that if there is going to be a push, it's going to be incredibly delayed. It's going to be after the third goes up. Uh, and then it's going to be very mineral intensive. A lot of zerglings, not a lot of banelings. Maybe a handful of roaches if the guy's just crazy. I've been saying that a lot lately. I'm going to stop. Violent Birds is going to be taking that third, though, so Mevius, even without the uh, gas timing, is probably feeling relatively secure on his two-base Forge Fast Expand, just just for now. The uh, Cybernetics Tour is going to be finished finishing shortly. The two gas has been grabbed, so Mevius's economy is looking in top, top shape, but we don't see any uh, supplemental unit producing structures just yet. Mevius needs to throw down either a robotics facility, which is very much in vogue right now, or a handful more uh, gateway techs, you know, one, two, three, or maybe even all the way up to seven if he's going to be aggressive. I almost said crazy. Almost. No, I did not, though. I did not. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> Violent Bird's still mining off of just one gas, and he's mining off of three harvesters. Usually you see, once the uh, third has been taken, two of those harvesters get pulled off, so you just have a little bit more minerals, a little bit more for the drones to come out and uh, saturate the third, and also later on to saturate all the gas geysers that need to be grabbed. And uh, hey, this is pretty cool. We see a Roach Warren being grabbed just behind Violent Bird's mineral line. 
Uh, and so that signifies to me that this is going to be a del even more delayed push. You could sometimes throw it on Banely Nest, get a bunch of Zerglings out on the field, do a lot of damage, but uh, getting the Roach Warren out, he doesn't have the gas income. He still only has one extractor, uh, and the lack of gas income is really going to hobble any aggression that he's going to have from those Roaches. Roach Warren finishes 20, 30 Zerglings on the production tab right now. Uh, incredible. If it's an overreaction to the push of a single Zealot and a single soccer which is well, very standard for Mevius. Uh, it's one of the biggest overreactions I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Especially with the Roach Warren out right now. Yeah, he succeeded in taking down a queen, whoop de doo but these Zer Zerglings now, this is a ma massive investment in the army, and so Violent Birds is definitely going to need to make something happen. Looks like he's pushing in. The sentries taking just a little bit of damage, but a oh, big delay, though, in throwing down the force fields. The second force field having to be grabbed just because so many Zerglings succeeded in making its way past. The Photon Gain is going to begin to plug away at those Zerglings, but a, sec a third sentry pops out just in the nick of time, throwing down another force field to stem the tide of those Zerglings. Looks like that pylon is going to go down. Oh, but the yeah, was open. Robotics facility is going to have an immortal out. Fantastic, because this photon cannon was about to be in for a world of hurt. Well, fortunately, with that uh, immortal being out on the field, the photon cannon survives to fight another day. And with 15 kills, he definitely did a lot of fighting today. Mevius's uh, his economy's looking top drawer. I mean, 50 for the worker count, and he's mining off of four geysers. Violent Bird, however, he's still just on one geyser. He's very much strapped for gas. And he's going to be relying very much on the Zerglings to do some damage, which is not the matchup that he wants. He wants to get those Roaches so that they can burst up this ramp, or he needs to get out of Baneling Nest. And uh, does he have a Baneling Nest? He does have a Baneling Nest. And bust down that front door, so it's possible that uh, Violent Birds is going to be relying a lot on Banelings because they're a little bit cheaper on gas. Uh, it as far as one single attack goes, you can kind of tank up your gas for a couple of seconds, make a bunch of uh, Zerglings push in, hope for a really high-priced hit on the uh, probe line. Roaches are a little bit more defensive-based. They're, they're high in uh, health so that they can stem the tide of an attack, but they don't deliver a very heavy payload. And we're going to see them get absolutely chewed apart by the two immortals that are out on the field right now. Plus one weapons will be finished very, very shortly. And these Zerglings and Roaches have to be very, very careful if they're going to be poking up this front door. Two force fields were thrown down just on the left side of this destructible debris, and it looks like with three sentries, only two force fields go down. He really needs another force field right here. Oh, but he doesn't have the energy for it. And instead, all those Roaches push in and get chewed alive pretty, pretty handily by the three immortals that are out on the field right now, but all the zealots and uh, the sentries have gone down. Just stalkers and uh, immortals remain. And the probes go back to work. 57 over 37. Violent Bird, it's okay, man. It's, it's really okay. You're on three bases. You don't need to, to deny this second. Just because you succeeded in doing a moderate amount of aggression, why is this still a gateway? Oh no, at the 11 minute mark, the gateway tech is just now finishing. Mevious Wow, so that, that explains a lot. It explains why we haven't seen so many force fields, why we see the gas so high, and why he, we see these units getting surrounded, because if we had a good number of sentries out on the field right now, Medius would not be in this situation. Gateway tech is done. At the 12-minute mark, the gateways are finally transforming, but the photon cannons are going down. Banelings are being <laughs> morphed in on the ground, uh, dressed by the natural, and it looks like the probes are being pulled to protect these stalkers. The stalkers coming in doing their extra damage against armor, uh, but will it be enough to push back so many roaches? And even if they do succeed in pushing them back, the worker skill tab is beginning to climb. All on these banelings, they just need to swing south, hit these probes, but it looks like they're going to be uh, exploding on all those stalkers, doing quite a lot of damage. Resources lost tab totally neck and neck, which is not what you'd expect for uh, Protoss at this moment. You'd expect Protoss to be far more cost-effective against somebody like this, but remember, Mevius' economy is actually succeeding over Violent Birds, because Violent just does not have the gas income necessary. Sentry up on the high ground of 120 gas. Where were you? We could have used you down by the ramp a minute ago. Oh, the Baneling gets a massive hit on all those probes that had been pulled. 30 workers killed tap. All of a sudden, that massive lead that Mevius had a very short time ago is completely lost to birds. 
Birds, uh, Zealots are in for a world of hurt as soon as those Banelings pop out, 11 of them on the way. However, each one of those hits from the Banelings on those Zealots is one hit that does not exist on all those pros. Man, that saturation has been just ravaged. It is just in terrible shape right now. Plus two weapons on the way, and Amebius is just scrambling to prepare this door. He needs to get a choke up, he needs to get a bunch of sentries up so that he can actually stem the tide from Violent Birds. And Violent Birds needs to calm down, man. You do not need to do this much damage right now. You just did a fantastic blow to the economy. You did everything you needed to do. You need to stop these shenanigans. Stop the Zergling production. Tech up to something worthwhile. Get more gas, get higher tech, get on Hive, and relax because you basically won this game and if you keep throwing away resources, you're going to lose it. Example given, those Banelings should have made their way into the probe line rather than blowing up the entire army of Nevius. It can be argued that that's probably a really worthwhile investment there, but uh, if those Banelings had managed to go in and just take out that entire uh, nexus you wouldn't have to deal with another maxed out army in relatively short order because Nevius has a fantastic infrastructure right now he's got quite a lot of gateways look at all those gates uh, it's huge and as well as a robotics facility constantly just shoving out immortals and this uh, zergling baneling tech isn't going to it's not going to get you leaps and bounds because this type of warpin with zealots and stalkers and sentries uh, they're going to absolutely ravage all those Banelings and Zealots, and they're going to be very cost-effective. Co resource lost have totally neck and neck right now. Zealots, again, going to town. Those Banelings may seem to sneak their way in, but not getting the uh, massive AoE damage necessary. And Mevius is progressively coming out on top. He's succeeding in keeping his units alive a lot longer now. The, this next round of engagements from Violent Birds is going to take place without the added support of sentries for Mevius, but uh, he's, you know, that plus two is done. Those zealots are absolutely tearing through these zerglings, uh, and they're, you know, eating up a lot of the damage from the Banelings. Banelings on the same hockey as those zerglings going in, just throwing their lives away on those uh, zealots, and uh, a robotics facility is immortals going down pretty quickly, but this type of very very cheap warp in of four zealots will hold the front door indefinitely it looks like the robotics facility at uh, one time took a break enough to produce a warp prism and those zealots do get surrounded and they do indeed go down but another round of zealots up on the high ground is gonna indeed just shut the door oh man violent birds is just throwing away so many resources the only thing on the production data are zerglings right now and he's on three bases but he's only got 36 harvesters you need to make more drones, get that economy up. You have you have a big advantage, but uh, you failed to capitalize on it, capitalize on it when it first happened, and you're just letting that advantage slowly slip away. There goes three drones. Let's see more of that. Let's see more of that. And uh, 19 larva, so he's doing very good, staying on top of his macro, uh, which actually for both players is pretty good. <laughs> the smallest of miss for those force fields, allowing all those banelings to make their way in. Two Banelings will make their way down just to the south side, but detonating a little bit prematurely on the gas rather than on the uh, minerals. It looks like the Zealots and Sentries are going to make their way down and secure the common ground in front of the third. I believe, I, I meant to mention this earlier, but the normal ramp into the natural is completely walled off. I think the only way out is this battleground right here. And I saw some roaches po poking at it a little while ago, but I decided that it was more important to focus on the ze Zealots and the Sentry back and forth but now that we've kind of reached a lull I can I can afford to mention it wow that was like a 45 expl 45 second explanation on something that should have lasted 12 oh those zealots oh those zealots kind of uh, forced the zerglings to do a run by rather than any sort of massive engagement where they could have gotten a surround hold position micro a couple of the probes are indeed going to go down but once the zealots and uh, sentries arrive those uh, Zerglings succeed in pushing up into the main, too. 30 workers killed goes up to 40 workers killed. Man, they uh, just fall on top of those probes, tearing them to pieces. But then once the Zealots arrive, uh, you're going to see those Zerglings go the, the way of the Dodo very, very quickly. And again, the resources begin to just stem back in. It looks like the Roaches are now the tech path of choice. Do we have any more gas? We don't have any gas. He's so broke on gas and uh, we're gonna see these roaches might poke at the front door might do a little bit of damage and then are just gonna be reinforced by all these zerglings because he doesn't have the gas income necessary to produce the uh, the sheer number of roaches that he can afford uh, he doesn't have the drones either 43 is beginning to produce drones again that's good 
A lot of zealots are out on the field though, so those roaches are definitely going to be very cost effective against those roaches, or those zealots and those sentries. Not so much against the immortals. Two immortals are out on the field with a couple of stalkers. And again, we can see just a bit of a lull. Violent Bird really wants to bait Mevius out onto the common ground, but with that observer out on the field right now, and look at that little shadow, that's so cool. I don't think Mevius is going to take the bait. Oh, but those Zerglings are so very, very fast. There goes some nice force fields from Violent Birds. Or uh, no, from Mevius, keeping Violent Birds contained. Looks like he's trying for that uh, front door, but again, that way is shut. And oh, those Zealots are kind of making their way known. And the. <laughs> those Bailings just falling on top of those Zealots. They get chewed apart. Really good force fields from Mevius this time. Hemming in those uh, Zealots or those zealots with those roaches, allowing those roaches to fall on them, but a small little gap on the right side allowed the roaches to close gap. There is no guardian shield being used by those sentries. That extra armor could have been could have kept one or two of them alive that might not have fall, fell there, but those immortals definitely pay for themselves and secure the third. Mevius, wow, what a hold. Really good job. Very good job holding that from Violent Birds. Violent Birds definitely committed far too long. Finally getting a wave of drones out right now. 47 over 48 on three bases for both. But again, no gas. Violent Birds is so far behind on tech. The robotics facility is already out for Mevius. And uh, we don't even have a lair at the hatchery. He's in a lot of trouble. And this Zergling run by had better do a massive amount of damage back at home. But I don't think I think Violent Birds is so flustered right now. Not being able to close the deal on the those first 50... Uh, initial rushes that he's gonna have to pull back and he's gonna have to protect his no he's going for a run by good you know that's it's probably a smart decision the plus two weapons on those uh, zealots is going to be doing short work of those zerglings but those zerglings can easily just run away because charge is not done on the other side of thing Mevius is moving up with his superior force into the third Mevius doesn't have anything to defend except for a handful of roaches and his own drones those drones are gonna be just cut to pieces in no time the Zealots are having a heyday on the main, but the main was pretty much mined out as it was. All the drones are being pulled. We can see that the naturals completely mined out. Those roaches have pushed in, but man, Violent Birds does not have anything to re-macro with. 16 harvesters left on the field. Those roaches are going to, with the help of the queen, clean up this uh, initial push, but the economy is absolutely in shambles of Violent Birds. And with that work prison mount on the field, he can re-macro this army very, very quickly. Actually, wow, I underestimated the amount of damage those immortals were doing. It looks like these immortals might barely... Ah, oh, they just barely fall. I was right the first time. Disregard. But that war prism is out on the field, and it's going to be able to throw down quite a lot of units in relatively short order, especially with the third out completely right now, just mining away, happy as can be, 38 over 26. Uh, that war prism beating a hasty retreat, but it's probably just waiting to be unnoticed so that it can set up closer to the fourth for Mevius. He can push back in, deal the death blow onto that third. Look at all those zealots making their way out on the field because he knows that Violent Birds with just so little uh, economy right now. He's he's going to be relying very much on mineral heavy units such as those Zerglings and those Zerglings are going to be chewed apart by so those Zealots. They're just going to be so powerful. They're, just, they're going to be very very good is what I'm trying to say. What is this? Oh, Overlords. I was hoping for maybe a hidden bundle of roaches or something like that just to get Violent Birds back into this but I do not believe I think the uh, the game's pretty much over for Violent Birds. I do not know how much longer he can last because every second that passes, Mevius is just getting one one step further and further in the lead. Uh, five centuries out on the field right now, and they're going to be just accumulating gas. So tips and tricks, Mevius, a uh, little bit better on those force fields. Wait for the rocks to go down before you throw them down. What you really want to do with force fields when you're dealing with a Zergling and Roach army is to cut them into more manageable chunks. Allow a couple of Zerglings to get through so that the Zealots can go to work on them. Uh, and then maybe just one or two Roaches so that your Immortals can also too. But it's all about bite-sized manageable chunks because if the whole Roach army rushes in, cut it in half. Uh, and that's what you want to use your force fields for, not to supplement the, uh, the rocks. No, not really. Uh, you know what you did about the cybernetics core, the warp gate tech. That's kind of important. Don't, don't miss that for the love of, for the love of my heart. Don't miss that. <laughs> uh, violent birds, man. The baneling hits that you got down here that killed thirty some. I mean, how many workers killed are we up to right now? Sixty one workers killed. Really good job on that harassment. But once you get a major hit like that, fall back. 
you're on three base, he's on two base, he doesn't have the drone advantage, you do. You've got the economy advantage, he's got to be the aggressor. You, he's got to push out, he's got to make the mistakes, rather than you trying to make Zergling and Roaches work. Uh, you're getting the tech now, you're getting the gas now, but uh, it's way too late. And uh, you've got to respect the, the path that sometimes Roaches aren't going to win you every, every match. You've got to realize that you have to move higher on the, the tech path. And uh, I think that if you would grab one or two more extractors a little bit earlier, you would have had extra gas to get up some upgrades. You can see that gas. If you look back, you'll see that your gas was so very small uh, throughout all of those engagements. And you were basically wasting larva on zerglings when you could have gotten route roaches. And then even then, you had some extra gas because of some extra extractors. You could have, you could have gotten some upgrades. You could have gotten layer tech. And maybe throw in some hydras. If the uh, all those zealots that were giving you so much trouble and those sentries, which were giving you some trouble, when they were pushing out, they were in such tight little groups. If you had one or two infestors, you could have easily crushed them. And it's not like you didn't have time. You you had like 12 minutes of just constant zergling uh, aggression. Instead of making a lot of those banelings, you could have saved that gas, got up the infester pit instead, or once you had that massive hit, just fall back, get up that that next unit composition, stay one step ahead of your opponent, uh, rather than trying to commit to something that really wasn't working. I don't know. Thanks guys for watching. If you have a game you want me to cast, you could PM me here or on Reddit. One way or another, I will see you guys later. I am Big and Scary.